Uh, right now joining us, Katie Pavlich, townhall.com. Katie, welcome to Cam and Company. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? We are doing great. Katie, you've been a busy lady. I saw you on uh, with Neil Cavuto today, so thanks for slumming with us. We appreciate it. No problem. <laughs> I love you guys. It's very kind of you. <laughs> love your listeners. All right, so before we go with the, uh, the absolutely amazing news of the day, uh, earlier today, uh, earlier on the show, I read this headline to the guys, and I, I did not allow them to comment. I was saving this for you to comment because we look to you for this, uh, for your comment first. On the blaze, memo reveals Department of Justice directed to hire people with intellectual disabilities. Please comment well, on that. that. What's Thanks that? On. I could have told you that. <laughs> it's, a, it's pretty much a work requirement to have some form of incompetence to work at Holder's DOJ. It, it, it's a. Uh, I mean, the story no, is. But a, in all seriousness, yes. I mean, it, it's this is the. I mean, this is an official. This is a J. This is a J. Christian Adams story mm-hmm. uh, that was originally posted at PJ Media. Yep. Christian Adams is the guy who blew the whistle on the the Black Panther voter. Uh, intimidation case in 2009 at the Philadelphia uh, polling station. And this is an official DOJ memo, you know, encouraging the hiring of people who have mental incapaci- incapacities right. um, to work in the Department of Justice, um, which is probably, in my, in my opinion, one of the most important federal agencies in terms of keeping our democracy sewn together because they enforce the law, which, um, you know, treating everyone equally under the law keeps everyone um, in the United States from being, you know, part of a country like Colombia or behaving in that way. And so it's, uh, well, at least I we, guess we at least, could have seen it coming, yeah. but well, at least we know. embarrassing. At least we know now the, the genesis of the idea behind Fast and Furious, someone with a right. severe mental condition. Well, <laughs> right, you were actually hiring mentally incapacitated people. Well, when I heard, Katie, when I heard the phrase intellectual, intellectual disability with this Justice Department, I thought they were going to hire conservatives. <laughs> because by their definition... <laughs> That right. we, we are intellectually disabled. <laughs> we all qualify. Right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, they would have hired them and then blamed them for everything. Right. Right. Yes. Right. All right. All jokes yeah. aside. So you had a post today uh, about the DOJ Inspector General report being delivered. Um, it's now uh, being. It was delivered to the quote unquote shot callers, being reviewed, um, and it'll be released to the public in 30 days. So we really there's not much to say about that. We'll see what happens in 30 days, but. Uh, then this morning, we get this press release from uh, the House Oversight Committee. Uh, it, it, it's quote, it says, top ATF official in the operation of Fast and remains on extended paid leave while simultaneously employed by major financial services company, that company being J.P. Morgan, that official being Bill McMahon, uh, one of the key figures in Operation Fast and Furious, as you've explained numerous times, as is, as is completely laid out in, in your book uh, t- uh, called Fast and Furious. Um, you know, before the show today, Seton asked me to look online and, and, and see if J.P. Morgan got a bailout. J.P. Morgan got a $12 billion bailout. J.P. Morgan also is the company that handles the ATF's credit cards. How dirty and incestuous and awful and ridiculous can this story continue to grow? Oh, it gets, it gets worse. Oh, it gets come on. even worse than that. So Bill McMahon <laughs> used to be in charge of the operation, ATF operations in the West, right? Okay. Until the whole Fast and Furious thing came to the surface. Then they, in my opinion, promoted him. ATF will say that they laterally moved him within ATF. They promoted him to the position of being in charge of the office. Okay, you ready for this? Yes. The Office of Professional Responsibility. <laughs> right. In Which, the Justice Department, awesome. this is the guy, Bill McMahon, is a guy who is overseeing professional behavior, professional conduct, and ethics inside the Department of Justice with a focus on ATF, yet he is double-dipping, pulling a six-figure salary from the taxpayer through his ATF salary while he's on extended leave and under congressional investigation, while he's do- and, then, and then he's also pulling a private paycheck from J.P. Morgan, which is the same bank that holds the contract for ATF credit cards, right. and yet he's in charge of the Office of Professional <laughs> Responsibility at ATF. Does he have a Does he have a company credit card? 
So of course he has a company credit card. Mm-hmm. Issued by yeah, J.P. Morgan. Course. So he, he charges to himself. How, yeah, how right. do you? How do you? What kind of expense report he would ch- that be? He charges to himself uh, yeah. and then pays it with bailout money. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. exactly. And the thing is, too, is, is Jay Dobbins came out swinging today. Jay, but Jay Dobbins is the guy whose house got burnt down. I wrote a big story about it uh, two weeks ago. It was the fourth anniversary of that happening, and right. he's been sued by ATF for going outside of their standard media policy. <laughs> And A.J. Dobbins is an ATF special agent. He's been sued for taking a private paycheck that was for speaking gigs and motivational speaking Mm -hmm. um, by ATF. And here you have this, and all because, you know, it's not about suing him because he violated policy. It's about suing him because he dared to jump his chain of command, in the words of the ATF director, and report corruption within his agency and failure to address threats against him and his family. And yet you have the guy... Bill McMahon, who is in charge of the Office of Professional Responsibility at ATF, on J.P. Morgan's payroll while he's pulling a six-figure salary from ATF. You know what, too, Katie? We talked about this earlier. Um, you know, when you when you look at the Occupy movement and their their hatred of the banks, and then you look at the DNC even um, hiding the name of Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, where the president will accept the nomination, uh, you know, the, the renomination for pre- the run for presidency. Um, they're calling it Panther Stadium. Um, not not but, even the Panthers call it no, Panther not Stadium. The Panthers, no one's ever called it that. Um, but it, it's just so ironic to me that you have this... You know the 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 Occupy crowd is so against. I mean, I, I've saw I looked on vi- online today for videos. Occupy is protesting J.P. Morgan, and and they're always against J.P. Morgan. But it no, they they it, they they seem to just want to ignore the connection of the big banks to the Democrats to the DNC. And I don't understand how the Occupy always puts this on fat cat white men Republicans when when you look at a story like this. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The interconnections and the money being made, and the Tim Geithners of the world, and, and the yeah. and the and the banks, and the and the it's it amazes me that the Occupy movement is so has so much hatred for this side of the aisle. Well, and and, and let's not forget Barack Obama, who in two thousand eight received more money from Wall Street than any other president in history, and received three times. Three times the amount of money from Wall Street than John McCain, who was the rich white Republican who was running for office. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and coming out today with you know the the anarchists who you know the Occupy is of course thing isn't isn't connected to them in any way. The anarchists who are planning to threaten the DN the I mean the RNC. Right. I guarantee you there won't be as much violence at the DNC as there is at the RNC. And this is the same pattern of behavior we've seen for years now. This happened at the 2008 convention at the. RNC, and they want to shut down the free speech of Republicans and conservatives by any means necessary. And it goes back to what you just said. You know, Bill McMahon is working under a Holder Justice Department, and someone within the high ranks of the Justice Department and ATF had to approve him pulling a private paycheck from from J.P. Morgan, which controls ATF's credit cards. Someone approved that. That wasn't just something he was doing on his own. And so the corruption goes all the way up the chain. And and something that Issa and Grassley pointed out today in their press release was, you know, you came in here, Mr. You know, ATF Acting Director Todd B. Jones, after we replaced you with from Kenneth Melson, Mm -hmm. saying you were going to change things, saying you were going to clean things up. It's just, in fact, the exact opposite. The corruption goes on. The paybacks go on. Um, Bill McMahon is a guy who has retaliated against whistleblowers, who was responsible for Fast and Furious. Is is Todd Jones holding him responsible for that? No. Mm -hmm. He's allowing him to pull a private paycheck and a taxpayer-funded paycheck all at the same time while he continues to smear whistleblowers like Jay Dobbins and John Dodson in the process. You know, and it's so amazing, too, because as much as as we've talked about this story and as much as you've covered this story, you know, no one's been fired. Everyone's been reassigned. Everyone's been moved. Everyone's been allowed to retire. Everyone's been given a speech with, with, uh, with expensive muffins. Um, and, right. and, and then we, now we find out that not only are they not fired, but they are, they are double dipping, as we say. And I would imagine that this is just, this is just one. This, you, know, you know there's never just one. Oh, no. It's, it's, this is definitely you know, a, a culture that's going on uh, within ATS. And, I mean, I forgot to mention, the reason why he's double dipping 
right? The reason he's, he didn't quit or resign his job at ATF and then go into the private sector separately is because in order to get his taxpayer-funded pension, he had to make sure he had enough years on the books at ATF to be eligible for that pension. So he's taking. So he's really, so he's he's taking, really reaming the taxpayers twice. He right. stayed in his job instead of resigning early, mm-hmm. because if he resigned early, he would have had to give up his pension. So and, he stayed in that while pulling six figures so he could get his government pension and while he's pulling a, a private paycheck from J.P. Morgan. Which is paid for by bailout money. So he's getting mm-hmm. paid twice by the, by the taxpayers in any instance. Yep, exactly. All right. Keep working, taxpayers. Corrupt ETF <laughs> officials are depending on you. Katie Pavich. slogan for everything. <laughs> Katie Pavich, thanks. Katie, we'll see you next week in Tampa. Thank you. Yep, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks.